Let's start the third module today. That is Railway Operation and Control. So the topics what we have to cover in this module include points and crossing, design features of turnout, station yard and marshalling yard, signaling and track circuiting. Okay. So in today's class, we'll study or we'll learn the first topic which is the point and crossing. So first we should know what is point and crossing. Point and crossings are arrangement by which different routes either parallel or diverging are connected and afford the means for train to move from one route to another. Okay. So that arrangement what you can see here is the main track. Okay. Now another track is coming here. It is getting diverged. So the arrangement which is made over here in order to make the train get diverged properly is known as points and crossing. In case of road, the facilities for turning of vehicle from one part to another do not require any special arrangement as the wheels have no flanges. But this is not the case when we are having flanges in the rail, flanges in the wheel of the rail. In the direction of movement of vehicle, in case of road, the driver can completely control it and he steers according to his will. But in case of rail, the direction of movement and diversion to another track is automatically controlled by wheel flanges rather than driver as in the case of road. So the problem of diversion of train from one track to another is solved by this point and crossing. Okay, so let's learn what is point and what is crossing. We'll go through each and every term in detail. Now coming to the figure, this portion this is known as the point or switch or here you can see it is the point switch or blade okay so point means you'll be having a tongue rail and a stock rail now what is the tongue rail over here the thing which is shown in red these two things these two rails is the tongue rail these two rails will be tapered which means that one end will be having a thickness which is reduced in shape and one end will be thicker compared to the other. Now opposite to this tongue rail we have stock rail. Okay, these two are the stock rail. So in a particular point or a switch we have a pair of tongue rail and a pair of stock rail. This is the point and this point we have a pair of tongue rail or two tongue rails and two stock rail. Then what we have is the stretcher bar. This stretcher bar is used so as to facilitate the movement of tongue rail. Okay, in order to move this tongue rail to this portion or if we want to move the tongue rail to this side, we have a bar and that bar is known as the stretcher bar. Now for easy movement beneath the tongue rail, a metal plate is provided that is the sliding chair but there is not this sliding chair is not that visible in this figure okay but always remember for easy movement beneath the tongue rail we are having a metal plate and that is known as the slide chair sliding chair now this tapered section that is the tongue rail and this is the stock rail the angle made between these two is known as the switch angle okay so this is all about the point or switch in a particular point we are having two tongue rails and two stock rail the angle between the stock rail as well as the tongue rail is known as the switch angle then one bar is there which is between this tongue rail and uh, the stock rail so this facilitate the movement of tongue, uh, tongue rail this is known as the stretcher bar okay so these are the terms associated with the points or switch. Now coming to crossing, here you can see which is shown in the figure that is a round shape is shown and this is the crossing. Okay, here we have a point rail. This is the point rail and this is the splice rail. The angle made between the splice rail and the point rail, this angle is known as angle of crossing. Here you can see a V-shape. This V-shape pointed portion is known as the nose of crossing. 
Here there are two terms associated with the nose of crossing. One is the theoretical and other one is the actual. In actual scenario, here this is not made completely into a pointed portion, but it is made at an angle. So that actual thing or actual nose is known as the actual nose of the crossing. And if we are extending this line to make an exact pointed V, that is known as the theoretical nose of the crossing. Now after this V, there is a certain portion where there is no rail. You can see over here, after this V, there is a certain portion where no rail is there. That is known as the throat of crossing. Okay, Near to point rail and splice rail, a rail is there which is known as the wing rail. You can see over here, this is the wing rail and here another wing rail is there. Wing rail is actually made so that it facilitates the entry and exit of the flanged wheel in the gap. Okay, so if a train has to move from here, if a train is moving from here, then in order to guide the wheel properly, wing rails are provided. If the train has to move through this, this way, it guides the wheel, it guides the flanges of the wheel to go through this track. So this is the usage or this is for what wing rail is provided. You can also see check rail over here. This also guide the wheels and they prevent derailment. Okay, you know that train has to diverge in this portion and some trains has to move through this exact track. So there is a possibility that it can go away from the track. So in order to prevent that derailment, we are providing check rails. This actually guide the wheel and they prevent the derailment. Again, wing rails are there. These wing rails converge to form a throat and diverge again on either side of nose. See here, it is getting converged over here and after the nose portion, it is getting diverged again. So this is the wing rail. So next comes the flangeway clearance. Flangeway clearance is the gap which is provided between the main rail as well as the check rail or wing rail. You can see a small gap in between. You can see a small gap here. You can see a small gap over here. Again, a small gap is here. So these way, small portion, what you can see, a clearance is there. That is known as the flangeway clearance. The gap between the main track and wing rail or it can be between the branch track and the check rail. It can be between the splice rail and the wing rail. So all those places you can see a small gap. That is the flangeway clearance. Then you can see the end are bent in the check rail or wing rail. These portion, these portion is bent. These portion are bent and that portion or that bending is known as flare. Okay. So these are almost, I have discussed all the terms. I'll tell you in other figures again. You can see here the main track. This is the stock rail. Another rail is there which is tapered. You can see here the thickness is reduced and here it is getting increased. This is the tongue rail. Okay. Then this is the portion of a crossing. You can see some gap over here where no rail is there. This is known as the throat. Then if a train is going through this, it has to easily guide the V. So wing rails are provided. This rail is the point rail. This is the splice rail. And again over here on this side to avoid the derailment, to avoid the train to go away from the stop, the train to go away from this track, check rails are provided. This also facilitates the easy movement of train. Now I have told you switch angle. This is the stock rail. This is the tongue rail. There is an angle in between and that is known as switch angle. Okay. So this is the tapered rail. Here it will be the toe and here it will be the heel. This length is known as the length of tongue rail and the distance between these two is known as the heel divergence. Now coming to the details of crossing, here you can see the facing direction and on the right you can see the trailing direction. So facing direction means when someone is standing at the toe and if he is looking towards the crossing, then this will be the facing direction. If someone is looking from here, from this portion, that is from the crossing, if he is going to look at the points, point will be somewhere here. 
okay point means that tongue rail where it is tongue rail and stock rail is there if he is looking towards this direction then this will be the or this direction will be the trailing direction now coming to yeah this and this other wing rail this bented portion is known as the flare this passage or small gap which is provided is known as the flange way this is the point rail this is the splice rail this is the overall length that is toe of the crossing is here and heel of the crossing is here so this length is known as the overall length i have told you that in actual scenario there will be the pointed v won't be there if it is a pointed v that is known as a theoretical nose crossing but in actual scenario it is not like that it is having a small angle over here so it is the actual nose crossing now why this exact v point is not there the reason is if the train is coming okay if it is coming very fastly or even if the train comes over this portion there is a possibility that it can strike with this portion so in order to avoid that striking of the wheel of the train this is being kept like this and also you can see the flare over here that bent is being provided so that the wheels can easily move it can easily give an exit also it can give an easily entry so this is all about crossings as well as points